Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of Pensado's Place. We're at the Gibson Showroom on behalf of KRK, and they're bringing us three incredible ladies. We're going to cover social media and branding. We're going to cover production. We're going to cover artistry, all kind of mixing, all kinds of stuff. I'm Herb Charlick. You know him. He's the master blaster, Dave Pensado, and we're going to have a good time. I have the pleasure of serving on the board of Tiffany Delilah Miranda's Girls Make Beats, an incredible entrepreneur, um, literally has built a, a business from the ground up that's amazing. Uh, she is also a manual and gear junkie. She, she will run you into the ground like her. Uh, another person who does that, Alicia Keys, gearheads. She's incredible. Uh, Allie Stone is making incredible music using Foley and all kinds of production techniques that you can't even imagine she would do. An activist inside her community and the Latin community is now in L.A., kicking ass and we welcome her and then this isn't fair but tyler scott who is not only combines academia and was on mtv and also social media she is our social media head um she's an amazing artist as well comes from a musical family for all of you guys who are sampling hey scotty what's that mean hey scotty is her dad with well, legendary voice with the whispers um these are wonderful ladies um yes. talented here's my thought tell me if i'm wrong I think that we're at a point in this evolution of things that the fact that you're great musically at what you do is as important as the fact that you're women. Is that fair? Absolutely. Speak, speak to it. Absolutely. I think for sure, you know, the talent has to really shine through in each individual. And the fact that, they're, that we're women and that we have been pretty much underrepresented in a lot of these fields like music production and audio engineering for so long, that it's equally important. Yeah. Ali, how about you? You feel the same? Yeah, yeah, I feel the same. And I feel that in the end, we're showing that what matters is the talent, the work that you put into it. And... I'm glad that we're expanding our work in so many different like areas, genres, and and such because it in the end shows it's about not not if somebody is like female or male, if mm -hmm. it's from Colombia or like America, mm -hmm. like whatever it is, like it's about the music and making sure that it's great and that it's good. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that Tyler, from your standpoint, that being a woman isn't important. It's just not what you lead with. Is that is that? Is that your take? Yeah, no, I agree. I feel like, you know, it should be the, the music first, the creation first, and then it's exciting to know, oh, a woman did that. But it is important for women to have a voice in these spaces, mm -hmm. it's especially during this time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an important factor, mm -hmm. for sure. So should we, should we be starting women at a younger age with uh, math and science and things like that, and then let them progress into audio and, and other forms of engineering? Absolutely. There's actually a study that has been done that shows that as early as age five, mm -hmm. young girls start to lose confidence in the things that they think they're mm -hmm. capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So the earlier, the better. At our organization, you know, Girls Make Beats, we're really focused on teaching girls how to become music producers, mm -hmm. DJs, and audio engineers. And we actually now start at the age of five, mm -hmm. all the way up to 17. Mm -hmm. Initially, when we started, I think we were at about age eight, and we kept getting inquiries from moms like, my daughter's so talented, she loves music she's seven she's six she's five mm -hmm. actually our youngest student five-year-old student was um, Chris Brown's daughter oh, really? royalty oh, really? <laughs> yeah. really cool. so I was like you know we need to start opening this up to five-year-olds as well sure. because there's so many talented mm -hmm. um, young minds and again just instilling that specifically in young girls from an early age is statistically proven to be important it, it's really an amazing time have you noticed in your time in the business this evolution from the dark ages to a more enlightened time is it better now than it was? I would say we're headed in the right direction. There's still a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, even from hearing schools taking music out and not thinking it was necessary and really fighting for, you know, the ability to have access and yeah. to show how important it is in the social emotional learning mm -hmm. of students as well, mm -hmm. um, both male and female, you know, mm -hmm. it's extremely important. And music is such a great tool to learn math. Like you learn mm -hmm. how to count and divide and, yeah. you know, all of these amazing byproducts that you learn from music mm -hmm. and just opening your world <clears throat> entirely and the creative aspect and that also being, especially in these times with COVID and everything, yeah. having that emotional outlet and yeah. that expressive outlet. Yeah. Ali, Rudo, uh -huh. um, it, it feels to me like, like, like you're a, a 2020 version of a one-man band. 
yeah, I, I, you I did everything that. on that, and and describe to us the process that you went through because I think uh, I think it's ins inspirational to a lot of people, including Thank me. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, so Crudo was born like during the pandemic, like right in 2020 when it started, um, and that I was like trapped in my studio with like my instruments and everything, but I just wanted to try to make music in a different way. I usually program a lot. So with Crudo, I decided to sample weird things, like not even instruments, like kind of like a knife cutting lime and like my salt, my pepper, like everything into mm. like using that as percussion for Crudo. Mm. I love it. Which is a song that in, in uh, Spanish, Crudo means raw. Yeah. So it was like, okay, it's kind of like related to food. It's about like, love being like raw and like true but like in the lyrics i also include like food elements so it was like okay i'm gonna use like kitchen mm. elements in the music yeah, making yeah. brilliant and i decided to make it yeah like during during the pandemic and it was like a super like it flowed very natural like uh, there was a lot of layering and like it was even like a new experience for me of approaching approaching production like more in that recording space and then like i just felt like I need to put this song out. So I finished mixing, mastering, like everything, like the song in a week. And I was like, I need to put it out now. I'm sending it to distribution now. And it was amazing to see like the reaction of people, like even asking me about like the elements of like the, the instruments, mm -hmm. the tambora, that is a typical Colombian instrument that I use there. Mm -hmm. um, the layering of vocals that even people sometimes thought it was a vocoder and it was like no i'm just layering my voice so many times that it's creating like this full-on harmony that feels like a vocoder but it's mm -hmm. just my oh, voice great. and and i tell you what's interesting is when i listen to it uh -huh. that there were every time i talk about dr dre i always talk about how he gets so embedded in things and mm -hmm. he finds different things and it comes out to being a dr dre thing but way <laughs> down in it are a lot of engines and motors mm -hmm. and activities and stuff. Mm -hmm. He thinks about it way differently. And when I listened to Crudo, 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 there was a bit of muse in there, and there was a bit of lore, and there was a bit of, but it all came out to Ali Stone. I yeah. thought it was just, I was like, oh, wait, I can't wait to meet her. <laughs> the other part, too, and I hope the cameras can get this, is I got to do some of those boots afterwards, because the boots are, the boots <laughs> are rocking. Thank you, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they make the sound, so. Yeah. Oh, I got you. You, you, use, you. you use Foley as production yeah. in what you did. It's really mm -hmm. amazing. Tyler, now for you, I'm always interested in your periphery to what's going on is always right there, whether it's family, you know, you are being celebrated with academia and we're dancing on MTV at the same time. But back in the day, I have all this history because we go way back. Um, does, that imp does that inform your artistry, your songwriting when you're in the studio? Have you learned and grown from your exposure? How does it work? Totally. I mean, my journey has been so unique and I feel like I've gathered pieces from all of it. Like growing up in a musical family with a father who's performing mm -hmm. and, you know, that that definitely was my foundation. Mm -hmm. Dancing as well. That's really how I, I learned um, music through tap dancing, actually. Really? Um, I, I learned um, just how to count and and yeah, I was exposed to music through dance. That was my kind of first personal exposure to music. Mm. Um, and then just fast forward, going all the way through school, fresh out of school, meeting you guys mm. and jumping into um, working with you, just kind of, you know, I'm quiet on the team doing uh -huh. social media in the shadows. Sort of. But, <laughs> but it's like I've been learning from both of you the whole time. I was telling Tiffany even, like, I remember when she first came on the show yep. and yep. hearing her and Whitney just talk about all that they were doing at Girls Make mm -hmm. Beats. Like, it's totally informed. That, that moment I remember specifically because it was a moment of representation, just seeing what women can do in audio. Yeah. And yeah, all of that has now informed and, and um, you know, bundled up to get me where I am now as a creator and how I want to show up in this industry mm -hmm. and how I want to show up in these rooms. Um, so yeah, the journey has been, has been all of it. I'm a proud of And we're gonna hear journey. music soon? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. cool, <laughs> cool. The, the other thing the three of you are, are 
um, besides being musical in your own way, but you're also activists in your space. You're, you're concerned about where it's been, where it's going, how you leave it for people, where it moves forward. Does the activism in the women's space, are you seeing more men get involved? No. We actually are, which is really delightful. I'm so proud that we have the support from our brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, men have wives and daughters and mm -hmm. sisters, so they have the same vested interest, you Absolutely. know, honestly. And um, yourself included, Absolutely. you know, being a part of our advisory board, we've never been anti men. We've right. been very um, particular about making sure that our messaging is that us women mm -hmm. are part of the conversation too, but men are our allies. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. absolutely, men, you know, it takes a village and a community to make mm -hmm. it happen. And Ali, your, your space is, is, is music to begin with, yeah. but you also have the perspective of the Latin community yeah. as well, which generally has been a male dominated community with yeah. a lot of sort of specificity. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing growth in that space? Yeah, I'm seeing much more growth, especially like in the last years, mm -hmm. like I've seen the change because even like when I started with my career and producing nine years ago to like now, like I see a total difference in like people getting involved, like actually men outreaching to like hire women, not only as producer engineers, but also as musicians, kind of like part of the crew. And, and I feel that's great because I've always been very vocal even when I started my career that I, I did see like it was weird that I was usually kind of like the only one mm -hmm. like or in the studio or like in this contest, like whatever it was, like I was the only woman and I was like, this is weird. And I started to work with an organization called Women Working for Women, like advocating for that because it was like, yeah, there needs to be a change. Um, and when I moved to LA, I did notice that here, like people are much more like forward thinking than like I feel like in Latin America, there's like a bigger work to be done. Yeah because it's like a little bit more of a sexist culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I loved like saying here in LA that everybody told me like embrace that, like you produce and mix and master, like that's amazing. Whereas like years ago, like in Colombia, people would say like, don't say that you did all of that because like nobody cares about that or like nobody wants to know that. Yeah. It's like, you should only sing. So right. it's like saying like that change of like culture. It's mm -hmm. like, I, I feel like it's great that people are now becoming aware and mm. now actually getting involved into what and, I say, yeah, like hiring women. And you guys are helping to make the change. Uh -huh. that, that's an important thing Absolutely. to remember. You know, you're on the front lines and yeah. you're gonna look back at this and, and see what you contribute. It's pretty amazing. Ali, can you describe your studio for me? Yeah, it, well, it's very- You just built it recently, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. And uh, it's like very me in a way that it's full of color, art. I have art everywhere love Mexican skulls, like I like to be inspired. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it has like a very homey vibe. Mm -hmm. And I have my, my main setup that has a pair of Avantone Abbeys. They're like mm -hmm. these great um, speakers. They're not out anymore, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, sound amazing, super flat. My KRKs, mm -hmm. uh, V6. Um, in the back booth, I have like, I, I call it the Roland booth because I have like my Roland synths, my <laughs> Jupiter XM, um, my AX Edge, my synth, my guitar. Mm -hmm. I have then my my guitar booth, so with all of my Gibson collection guitars. And there's like an Indian booth where I have like a collection of Indian instruments mm -hmm. um, that I've been a fan of always because, well, in Colombia we have a lot of like um, Asian influence and uh, like, so like for example, yeah, even Shakira, like, uh -huh. uh -huh. like with all this Arabic music, Middle Eastern and everything. So I started to include that in my music and actually learning how to play those Indian instruments. So oh, yeah, like cool I have a uh, Swarzangan sitar, the Shruti box. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice combination, very multicultural. And then there's my cat. So he's That's important. the engineer in the room. Yeah. We, we are you record people. your own vocals? Yeah, I record my own vocals. How, do you, you don't go out to the to the room, run back into the control room, turn on the, <laughs> <laughs> how do yeah. you do it? Yeah, usually um, for like the vocal stuff, I have like this um, ISO booth like around, kind mm -hmm. of like the chaotic eye booth. Mm -hmm. um, and I use my Focusrite liquid channel. That's okay. like my main, main preamp. And uh, I love that because it gives me like so many colors that mm -hmm. I can like play around with vocals also with guitars, everything. 
Um, and thankfully, my studio is like very quiet, so like yeah, I don't have to like address any like leaks or anything mm -hmm. of like bleeds in, in the <laughs> recording. Are all of you optimistic about the future, from a technological standpoint, from an activist standpoint? Give me your give each of you give me your perspective on the future. What do you think? I can say I'm for sure very optimistic about it. I think that the climate of the industry is definitely headed in the right direction. Like I was saying earlier, we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Women, I think as of the last um, report that was done by an Annenberg yep. study, we are still less than 3% of music producers. So there's a ton of work to be done, mm -hmm. but like I said, the good news is that the music community seems to be very aware of it now. Mm -hmm. um, and they are taking strides to you know create initiatives to mm -hmm. help push women forward. So mm -hmm. we have have a lot of great partners, KRK being one of them, yep. you know, supporting our initiatives. We actually did a really dope um, beat making session at the Gibson showroom here. We had this completely nice. configured differently. Love it. But we had about 15 Ableton pushes and our girls came in all COVID friendly. Nice. Um, and COVID safe. Ali, how about you? Are you optimistic about the future and what you yeah. see happening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel optimistic. And yeah, as Tiffany was saying, like there's work to be done still, but I feel like we're going in the right direction and I love that now like all these production engineering elements are much more like accessible mm -hmm. to people in general. So, if, so even if women and men want to start like since young, like they can actually get like the audio interface, have their uh, DAW, like start working in music, recording themselves and learning from a very young age. Like it's not something that's kind of like super far away and like unaccessible now. So I think like that's amazing. Like with technology, everything is like advancing yeah. like super quickly. There's also like much more like uh, virtual workshops, like uh, yeah, opportunities to learn from other people yeah. virtually. I feel like that's amazing, amazing. because uh -huh, yeah. it's like easier to acquire the knowledge. Tyler, what about you? You optimistic about the future? Please say yes, because you work with us. Yeah. And if you're pessimistic, <laughs> I'm, I'm no, in trouble. No, totally, totally. I echo everything that they already said. I'm, I'm optimistic on all fronts, the creative side, the technical side, and the business side. Like mm -hmm. even, like you said, working for you guys, just you guys always are seeking women to bring on the show. Absolutely. In the, you know, in our our workspace you you give me and other females on the team a voice so i'm i'm very optimistic. she's being very kind the females <laughs> in pensado's place run it uh they don't work for us we work with them and they are amazing and it's been the best team we've had yeah. over the 11 years have been the team that have Hands been down. run by women by by far companies like krk that are supportive that have these kinds of things that get behind you that help with product I think that's an important thing, don't you? It's extremely important. When I first started Girls Make Beats, I literally started on like a wing and a prayer. Mm -hmm. I borrowed my sister's credit card because at the time my credit was. Oh, well, trust I me. Speak about that. I know but, that. Um, I, I that literally purchased one computer, one DJ controller, and one um, Ableton push. Wow. And we took that around to 11 schools for career days and just exposed as many kids as we could. And before I bought the equipment, I had reached out to a couple of, you know, potential sponsors, but blindly, they didn't yeah. know who I was. I didn't have a track record of doing anything. Sure. And I said, let me do this and I'll show them what we did with one. Imagine what we could do with more. Right. So the fact that we have support from partners and helping to create all of these um, accessibility opportunities is extremely important, especially in the line of work that we do. And you guys agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like even in that, like I'm also super grateful with like the brands and sponsors that have like supported me in my career as well, like even getting to have like more plugins to mm -hmm. broaden my spectrum of like work uh, more instruments even to be able to have um, yeah access to an instrument if I travel anywhere else and knowing like oh if I need a guitar like I can ask Gibson and they'll get me a guitar or like universal audio with the plugins roll and like that's amazing yeah. and I, I feel like that pushes you to like even like acquire like much more knowledge and everything like yeah. having more tools like to to work with what inspiration what do you use for inspiration where do you get your inspiration Honestly, I have so many aspects of what inspires me from my everyday life. Um, you know, my mom, my sister, now my son, who's seven months and just the most amazing 
person and um, you know and that inspires me creatively as well as a lot of the recording artists that I was exposed to at, at an early age mm -hmm. so my background I'm actually a, a singer as well and I learned how to sing from listening to some of the greats Billy Holiday and Nina Simone Etta James Ella Fitzgerald these were like my favorite I was literally like a lead singer for 20 piece bands in high school mm -hmm. and being exposed to these incredible instruments and how you know the um, instrumentation works together but these women they had powerhouse voices mm -hmm. not just you know in their ability to sing but they were also activists in the community mm -hmm. so it was super impactful and they inspired me a lot to create girls make beats and being able to find my voice and, and share that voice and, and be loud yeah. and Ali uh, uh, how important is collaboration with you I feel it's super important collaboration and I feel I realized that like when I moved here in LA um, because back in Colombia like I would just work out by myself um, and like here in LA like the culture of collaboration is so big and like it's crucial in music like writing songs with other people co-producing like giving us an engineer like collaborating with many musicians and that opens your mind to so many more possibilities of like approaching to a song in a different way and like even learning every day of like seeing oh I wouldn't have done this as a producer but this is super cool and this works so like now you know like a new tool to implement into your work so I feel like that's amazing because you're always learning when you collaborate with people and it's also a nice way to like connect make friends as well like get to kind of like know people that have your same passion for what you do so that's amazing and Tyler it feels to me like you're, you're in a bit of a transition from the business world to the music world can you describe how that's going for you mm, yes I it's interesting because I started in the music world singer songwriter and then kind of ventured into the business shadowing you know you guys mm -hmm. um, and like I was saying before that's so strongly um, informed who I am now as a creator. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited. I've kind of gone through an inner self journey um, to kind of figure out who I want to be as a creator. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've kind of repackaged my, my music and my branding and I'm excited. Have you, got any, have you got any solid how you want to be and who you want to be? Oh, totally. I've, I, in that self work, I stumbled upon just the science behind the power of sound and how that influences us wow. health wise, you know, just for health and well being. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of work, as you guys know, with Subpack. I, I, mm -hmm. I produce weekly publications with them, just highlighting the, um, the research that's being done, the science that's being done on how sound impacts us as humans. So mm -hmm. as a creator, I'm taking all of that and making music very intentionally to help heal people and help guide mm -hmm. people to themselves. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more focused on that than the kind of celebrity branding artist component. I, I really want to make music for wellness. I still have to express myself. Mm -hmm. I still allow myself to express my journey, but for the most part, my intention is to make music that is aligned with healing, with a positive message, um, and just, yeah, good things. Ali, uh, can you give me a technique that you, that you find useful? Uh -huh. For anything, drums, or yeah, anything that you wanna make loud, always the parallel compression. I usually wrote it, yeah, with the parallel compressor and then add a limiter after the parallel compressor so that it's super like tight and like loud. That works every time. Um, for uh, recording in general, I like to record like at low levels actually, mm -hmm. like, uh, and then like if I need to bring it louder, like I'll do that mm -hmm. after recording, mm -hmm. and uh, just making sure that things don't sound like too close for vocals for guitars uh, drums anything mm -hmm. that it is mm -hmm. just to kind of like have a nice um, shape of the wave to like avoid like any peaks or anything mm -hmm. and um, for like scenes bass lines everything like layering like layering is amazing like even for bass lines I do that a lot usually people would say like the bass has to go like in the middle centered mono 
And I don't like to do that. Like I actually like to put it in stereo because it makes you feel like in a different way, like kind of like hearing like some low frequencies in the right side and then in the left something happening, like even automating the bass opening, then going to the center opening. Like it makes it like more visual, kind of like a 3D experience, but with sound. So I like to play that like a lot, like using like the visual part into sound making, basically. All right, we're going to put you through this torturous thing called batter's box. Do you know what it is? Should I? Okay, so. I'm gonna throw some at you, Tyler, as we come around. Are you ready? I am. Fire away. Okay, one word if you can. Major or minor keys? Minor, major. Hmm. Ty? Hmm. Minor. Melodies. It can be more than one word. <laughs> yeah, oh, always. Yeah. Always, okay. What about you, too? I love them. Got you. You're a singer. What? Core to the singer. Ah. Hero. Mom. Ah. Mom as well. Mom. Microphone. Avantone CV12. Mm. Okay. Neumann. Mm. Just say, I just think vocals. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Compressor. UA6176. Ooh. Go ahead, too. <laughs> the LA 2A. Wait, I got one for Tyler. Facebook versus Instagram. Depends on who's asking, but personally, Instagram. Okay. Go ahead, next one. Instagram or TikTok? Ooh, right <laughs> yeah. now, TikTok. Yeah, so I was, that was the other one I was going to do. Instagram. No, that's a good question. I'm too old for TikTok. I still don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Wait, hold on, what? <laughs> right, exactly. It's good to fall asleep, too. I like falling asleep, too. Harmonies. Mm. I love harmonies. Mm. Stack them. Mm. Yeah, complex. Mm. Favorite. Virtual synthesizers. Atmosphere. Mm. Mm. Spire. I don't have anything to say about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, lyrics. I love you, baby. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, well, they're, they're, it's, it's sort of over. Hi, right, everybody, just, just take a break. It, it's, it's sort of done. Um, yeah. Well, I was, and one more for you just before we get out of here, and then, then I want to get you guys' take on the future, and we'll, we'll wrap all this up. Social media branding important, not important? Key, everything, Key. vital. In wrapping up what's been a great conversation, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, we have the pleasure, one at, at KRK's pleasure, of hosting you here at this place, but also constantly getting to meet new people, learning from you constantly, watching your evolution, supporting it. Um, and it's just, it's just cool as hell. It's yeah. just so yeah. exciting to be able to say, here's music, I know the person who made it, they're bad as hell, they're continuing to do things, and now they've built this and built that. Tiffany's on the DEI board that I chair, and I just watch her grow as an entrepreneur and watch Noah, got a fan of your music, I've known Tyler, I don't wanna tell you how I've known Tyler, and now I work for Tyler. So, you know, it's, it's <laughs> a pretty all. amazing thing. Um, before we leave, wrap up with uh, each one of you giving advice to the future Tiffany's, Allie's, and Tyler's. What would you say to them? So all the future Tiffany, Delilah's out there, uh -huh. I would say be relentless. And sometimes no means not now. It might not be right. the right time. Just right. keep trying. Great point. Allie, what about you? Yeah, I'd say uh, be persistent, passionate, um, believe in yourselves. And also remember in the end, it's the year, not the gear. So mm -hmm. yeah, take that with you always. Mm. Ty? Yeah, I would say um, do it, you know, do it now. And I would say, you know, take time to know yourself and be confident and believe in yourself. Dave, we're lucky enough we get to do this, huh? I mean, you get three incredible ladies who yeah, inspire very gifted. three incredible musical artists who yeah. inspire us who happen to be ladies yeah. uh We're not a, worthy. a company like krk who who not only supports them supports us and supports others and allows us to bring this kind of information and expose you to this kind of talent 
Um, and this is how we inspire each other. We're a community that pulls together. We meet each other, we connect, and we grow from there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Make sure you go back and listen to everything that they said. You'll learn a lot. Yeah. And we love your support. We'll see you next time.